Hey guys, what's up? Jason's here. Today, we're going to introduce you how to configure static routes for normal use of a dedicated zip trunk. Here's the story, check it out. In some cases, our clients have applied for a dedicated trunk and want to use it with our S-Series PBX. Usually, the trunk provider will provide a dedicated Ethernet cable and network information. A network interface of the PBX should be connected to the trunk provider. With this dedicated cable, PBX will have access to voice service, yet normally without internet access. To ensure PBX can reach the internet to enjoy services like email and the time synchronization, we need to have another internet cable connected to the PBX. By this circumstance, as serious PBX is required to be connected with two kinds of network at the same time. So, both of the LAN port and the WAN port on the PBX ought to be configured. To help the PBX make use of the two ports in order, we can create routing rules in static routes. When PBX tries to send packets out, it will match those rules and decide which network port to use. Alright, enough talk, let's jump in and figure this out. Taking this scenario as an example, a dedicated SIP trunk has been connected to the WAN port of the PBX via an ISP router, while the LAN port is connected to the Internet. Let's go to the network setting part. Before configuring static rows, we need to ensure both ports have been configured as required. The LAN port has been configured according to rules of our local network IP, while the WAN port has been set following the trunk provider's requirement. Usually in this scenario, we recommend you to set the LAN port as the default network interface. If any changes are made here, remember to reboot the PBX, making them take effect. Now, turn to the static routes. In routing table, here are some routes added to the PBX automatically. Since LAN port is configured as the default port, all the routes for the LAN port will work with no doubt. What we need is to create a rule for the WAN port. Choose Static Routes, click on Add, filling these blanks with the information provided by the carrier. In Destination and Subnet Mask, enter the IP segment of the ISP's SIP server. In the scenario we've mentioned, the IP address is this one. Configure the destination and the subnet mask in this way. The settings will be covered a wider IP range and ensure successful signaling and media communication through the trunk. The next step, enter the gateway of the WAN port. As for metric, it's optional. We can leave it empty. The final step, choose the WAN port, save and apply the configurations. We can see the new rule added to the routing table. Now, both ports will work normally following all these rules. Alright guys, that was how we configure static rows on the S-Series PBX. Thank you for watching. For more information, please click here, checking our online documents. And of course, don't forget to subscribe us. I will see you guys in the next episode.